All the time. I don't know about you, but I look forward to coming and worshiping with you guys every Tuesday night. Amen? Amen. It's fire, right? Let's get that Holy Ghost fire flowing through this place again. Woo! Amen? Put our hands together, man. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Like a fire awakening desire to burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, your mighty river. Part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face. Look into the sky. Come on. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason. You're the reason. Help back the water for my release. 
brought you out of a mess, yes. and he turned that mess into a message, amen? amen? So tell everybody, tell everybody your testimony, tell the non-believers your testimony. There's a lot of brothers out there that need to hear that our God saves, amen? Our God changes lives, amen? There's another way, a better way. Higher than the mountains that I 
stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the chase. One Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. I said it's high.
out on me, love. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. You know, God, love never runs out. You know, last week before we start this second song, I caught COVID. And then right to that today later, my mom had to go to the hospital. If she didn't listen to me to go to the hospital, she would have died. She had two pints, she lost blood, two pints of blood. She shouldn't even be here right now, but God. And I'm thankful, Father God, for a praying church. Yes. For men of God that steps up and pray. Yes. And Pastor Rudy, as soon as I call, pray. Pastor Dave was there because I couldn't go. Pastor Dave said, don't worry about it, bro. I, I got you. And so I got well to go myself. But because of a praying church, I'm standing here and my mom is out of the hospital. Amen. So his love never fails for us. Praise God. It's not just the prayer. It's the faith Amen. behind the prayer. Amen. How many of you checked your chair? Checked the legs on your chair before you sat down tonight? Nobody did, huh? You guys all had faith that that chair was going to hold you up. Amen. That's the kind of faith you need to have in the Lord. Amen? Amen. That he's going to hold you up. That he's real.
tell him, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I belong to you, God. I'm all yours, Lord God. I surrender to you, Lord. Everything that is within me, Lord. Every part of me, Lord, belongs to you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. If we can have our ushers come forward as we continue to worship the Lord in our giving, amen. Amen, amen. Lord loves a cheerful giver. Father God, you own everything we have, Father God. Thank everything you. we have comes from you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You don't ask for much. Thank you, Jesus. But give us willing hearts to be obedient to the things that you've called us to do. You've called us to, to give tithes and offering to the church, Lord God. Out of obedience, Lord, may we follow your direction, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I won't forget the wonder how you brought deliverance or the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the water for my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the Hallelujah. 
Come on, let's give the Lord praise right now. We serve a great God. I know you guys are tired. Just finish eating. We got to praise the Lord anyways. Amen. Uh, Brother Emerson, where you at? Come here, brother. I'm going to give you a minute. Brother Emerson just came in a little while ago, but I want to give him a minute to announce something that's very important to us at church and uh, to a lot of us that way. So, Brother Emerson, uh, now don't start preaching, brother. I'll give you a minute. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. I want to thank Pastor for giving me a few minutes with y'all. As we start the new year, we want to encourage you to uh, get into the Word. The Bible says that we are to stay connected with the vine, and we do this through the Word of God. We come to this great service on Tuesday. We have services on Sundays. But what about the rest of the days? Yeah. And so we need to be in Scripture. Uh, when I first came to the, uh, to the faith, um, I was excited about doing ministry. But I just wasn't very confident about my understanding of Word and where to go in the Scripture and what certain Scriptures meant. So we have Timothy classes that would uh, provide you with a, uh, a foundation of the basic principles of our faith. And so we have them on Wednesdays, and we have them on Sundays. Uh, for some of you that have been in, in, uh, in, at this church for some time now, you probably already completed Timothy. So then we would have uh, a next class called It Is Written. And so that is for folks that have completed the foundational uh, Bible study of Timothy. And It Is Written never ends. It's perpetual. I say either rapture or the Lord calling us will, will end that Bible study because we're going to be in it uh, one book at a time. And so that, uh, that, uh, that Bible study, uh, we go verse by verse. Uh, right now we're starting uh, Ephesians in, in one time slot, and then we're, start, we're uh, starting 2 Corinthians in the other. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll be available at the end of the, uh, of the service to take signups, but I really do encourage you, uh, make 2024 count and get into the Word. That's awesome. Thank you. Give it to Brother Robert. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Awesome, powerful ministry. Make sure you get involved in that. Uh, one thing before I, I uh, pray, uh, I just want to make another announcement as well. A lot of you brothers in here uh, have the ability um, to be able to help in this form. It, at Cornerstone, we need all types of different security, whether it's a parking lot attendant to security, uh, also security with Brother Ed in the morning. Ed Belmontes, he's here. Brother Ed, where are you at? He's right over there. He's raising his hands up. That brother oversees all the security in the morning, Sunday morning, uh, with Sister Pearl, with all the children's ministry. He has a team for them as well. Uh, we have front security that, that's on the front with Brother Tom as well, the Wilson. That's with Brother Tom as well back there. And then we also have armor bearers. Uh, we have armor bearers here. Roger's here as well. And we got armor bearers. Uh, uh, Nick's not with us today. He's working late. But we need armor bearers as well. All different types of uh, forms of security. Uh, and and, and we're, we're needing that. I believe that. Let me give you an example. If, if, if something was to happen to an adult anywhere, especially here on this campus, it's devastating. But imagine if something happened to a child. We're not letting that happen here. So I believe that even before the pastors to be secured, I believe the children need to be secured first. So we need to help in all different forms. If you can help, if you're interested in one form or another, maybe just uh, you might have some real good eyes. You're real observant. You know, we need, we need uh, all aspects of it for the Spanish ministry as well. All different forms of that, of that thing. Uh, I got a brother that's coming alongside to help me in all different avenues of the security. Brother Rich, stand up right here. My brother right here. For those of you that are interested in any form of those branches, come see my brother after service today and make sure you get his number. It doesn't mean you're committing. It just says you're interested in it so that we have some information or if we have some uh, meetings, you can be invited to them. But because of that, it doesn't mean that you are uh, uh, committing to it. And also we need uh, security with our outreaches with uh, Brother Tim's team and, and, and uh, for... Uh, uh, feeding Fresno, also for the showers ministry. We need all aspects of security. So if you guys can help one form or another, we would love to have you. Amen? Amen. But I'll just say it straight like this. I've said it before. If you're afraid, just stay home. I'm just telling you like that. We need, we need men that are not afraid. Amen? If you're, not, if you're not afraid, we can use you, brothers. Amen? Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Thank you once again, Lord, for your goodness and your grace, your mercy and your love. Thank you for every individual that is here tonight, Lord God. For we know they can be anywhere else, but they have chosen to be here, to be here, Lord, to, to fellowship with one another, to lift their hands and our hands, my hands in praise and adoration unto you, Lord God, to worship you and to praise you, to encourage one another, to hear of your word, that lives will be changed and souls will be saved, that through it you will be glorified. In the name of Jesus, Father, forgive me of all my sins, for I am a sinner. 
have your way tonight for my reliance is, is upon you, Father. I'm not asking for your help. I'm asking you for you to take over, Lord God. Have your way for once again, you are the King, you are the Lord, you are the Savior. In the precious, holy, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you know, I love, I, it's just like, just like the rest of you guys. I love the Lord. I do my best to serve the Lord. Uh, and I do my best to, throughout the day not to flinch. You know what I'm talking about? I do my best not to flinch. Because sometimes when you flinch, man, that's not a good thing. And I do my best not to flinch. But even with that, everything that you and I are exposed to every day is literally crazy, brothers. It's like even now, it's always been there. But it's like the Lord is, is, is opening my eyes to a whole other level of that those things that are out there are not just, not just out there. For the man that's seeking God, many of those things that cause us to flinch are put up there before you deliberately. They're placed before you on purpose. And many times we just think, oh, that's just there. That's just my neighbor. Oh, that's just that woman that lives there. That's just where I get my coffee. Or that, no, a lot. If you're seeking God, many of that is deliberate. Now, I'm not saying there's a demon over, you know, under every rock. I'm not saying that behind every bush. But I'm saying when, when the enemy knows he wants to take you out because God is doing something through you, he's going to place those factors around you all the time. And, 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 and like I say, I believe they're, they're deliberate. So I'm seeing those things in a greater way that the Lord is showing me those things. And I thank the Lord for that because it gives me the ability to discern and say, you know, I'm even going to entertain that a little bit. Because in times past when I, was, when I would entertain that even for 30 seconds, if I entertain some of those things even for a little bit, it, it messed up my whole day. Yeah. I, I could be in church that night and I still think, <laughs> I still remember that image. I remember what was said or what was done. I still, I still remember that. And so I do my very best to captivate those thoughts and to, uh, to me determine what I'm going to look at, what I'm not going to look at. And, you know, whether a person is a believer, if one is a believer or not, you know, whether we, we believe in Christ or serve the Lord or not, there are decisions that we have to make in reality that, that are different factors that we have to determine to say who we are going to hang around with or who we're not going to hang around with. There's factors that we have to decide to say, you know what, this is why I'm not going to associate with those people or that person, or this is why I am going to associate or hang out with them. There's factors and there's decisions that you and I are having to make who we're going to hang around with and who we're, going, who we're not going to. Let me tell you, if you won the $400 million lottery... I guarantee you that you're going to have people. You're going to have friends coming out of the woodwork, brother. If you, won, if you won the lottery, you would have people coming around from all over the world. Everybody's going to have a need. Everybody's going to want to be your friend. Everybody's going to want to talk to you. Everybody's going to want to uh, tell you something, a vision, a direction, an investment. Everybody's going to want to talk to you. And all of a sudden, uh, women and some men, brother... We'll see you as the most handsomest man that ever lived. I mean, I'm not being ridiculous, but it's true. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe he talks like that. Well, I need to. Some of you brothers still practicing that gay stuff. Yeah. That's why the Lord allowed me to do that. Yeah, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, you don't like it because it hurts. It's hitting dead on, right? Amen? Just, just, just receive the blessing, brothers. Amen? Just praise the Lord and receive it. If, if, if you're a giver and you pay for the people's meals, you're going to be invited everywhere. Yeah, if you got money and you want to pay for everybody's meals, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be the, the guest all the time. You're always going to be invited. If you're an encourager and you have a habit of a good thing to speak in life into people, people will seek you out. They will. They will, they will seek you out. If, if you see your friends and every time you see them, you're, borrowing, you're trying to borrow money from them and you're always trying to hit them up for money, and they'll go out of their way to stay away from you. Yeah. You can be their friends from elementary, from kindergarten. Kindergarten. You can be their friend. All these, and you, they'll, they'll, they'll do their best to go out of the way to not, to not be around you. Because they're choosing not to do that because of how they feel. They're making decisions based that way. Amen? Amen. But as we do our best, as I do, my, as we all, I do, you do your best uh, to do right 
in our walk with Jesus, once again, there are these factors that we have to make a decision that I'm not going to, there's certain people I'm just not going to, I mean, I want to love everybody and I want to see everything as ministry, but there's some people that have just been turning from God and just, just whatever reason, they're saying, nope, 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 nope. And I've been around some of those folks and, and they know I'm a pastor, they know I love Jesus, and they're within a the group and they're still saying, ah, F-bomb this and F-bomb that, son of a, and they look at me, see if I heard it, and they're like, and they keep doing that over and over and over. And I need to make a decision. I'm not going to position myself that way. Amen. You see, and I, I've said this before, and I'll say it to you again. You see, throughout Scripture, the Lord tells you and I, tells us, the, read, the ones that read the Scripture, it tells us to love our enemies. Yeah. Amen. To do good to those that despitefully use you. But there's nowhere in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation that tells you to love God's enemies. It doesn't tell you that. There are those people that were... That, that, that were blinded, that didn't understand. There were heathens who were blinded spiritually, and God honored them. He blessed them, and, and, and he, he, he helped them. But then those that came against God, that decided to worship, worship idols, God straight up had them killed in the, New Testament, in the Old Testament. God put them away. Those that were making a decision to come against God. So there's decisions we got to make instead of quit being a punk and still hanging around the same people that God has said, you need to, I've called you before to cut them people loose. I'm going to go a little bit further than that. You might not like it. But sometimes that's, that's specific family members too. Oh, but that's my cousin. Yeah, but when are you going to stop letting him hit on your wife? Huh? When are you going to stop letting him do that? Oh, but he's just getting drunk. Well, then sock him up. He won't feel it in the morning. Amen? Yeah. And you tell him Pastor Rudy said too. I ain't afraid. I got these big old brothers right here that'll back me up right here. Praise God. Amen, brothers. Amen. Come on. You better back me up now. Amen, brothers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Woo-hoo-hoo. I want to make sure I didn't speak too soon, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm like Jiminy Cricket. I'm no fool. No siree. I want to live to be 103. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Let's go to Scripture. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 17. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now listen. Um, I believe this passage, when most preachers and individuals speak of this passage, they always emphasize where, you know, that do not be unequally yoked, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Uh, most of the time with marriage. You know, do not get, you know, don't be getting married with some homegirl that don't love Jesus, you know. Don't, don't, you know, don't do that. I, I mean, I'm just telling you straight because a lot of people get married for a lot of other reasons, man. <laughs> you can love, oh, I love Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then you see that thing like, oh, I'm going to marry that. <laughs> don't even have any met her yet. Yeah, because you like everything you see. Yeah, and pretty soon you're like buying that used lemon car. Where do I sign? Yeah, that's why the Lord says you need to, you need to, as a man of God, you need to back up. For you single brothers that are single, doing your best to love Jesus, I'm going to shake your hand, my brother. Yeah, that's honorable if you guys are living for God, you know, and you're, and you're a single man. That's honorable, man, if you're, if you're, if you're doing your best to live for God. That's, um, I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord for you brothers, amen. Um, <laughs> but when you hear that scripture not being, I mean, to not be uh, unequally yoked, it's not, it's not telling us that if your wife does not believe like you to divorce her. It's not telling you if your kids or your family do not believe like you to, to cut them loose or to treat them like lepers or separate yourself. Uh, it's not saying that. It, it, it's not, it, it, and it does not mean isolation. Oh, I'm going to just go to the mountain. I'm going to become a monk. <laughs> I'm just going to have the scriptures with me and read them all day. And I'm just going to fellowship with God with my ukulele. And I'm just going to give God glory. <laughs> All day, I'm going to separate. Not talking about that. 
You know, don't, 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 it doesn't mean that. You know, the Apostle Paul, uh, when he spoke to the Corinthians, um, he was not telling them um, to break fellowship with those people that are immoral. He wasn't telling them to break fellowship with people that are immoral. He was saying to break fellowship with those who profess Christ that are immoral. Watch, it's 1 Corinthians 5.11. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother. Talking to the Corinthians, talking to the church. I'm going to read it again. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slander, a drunkard, a swindler. With such a man do not even eat. It's wild, ain't it? But it's Bible. You can't just follow the stuff you want to follow. You can't just say, I'm going to obey the stuff I want to obey. I'm not going to just listen and, and, and follow the stuff that I think makes me feel real good. That's Bible right there. But let me tell you, you need to be very careful. You need to have that discernment. You need to be, uh, divide, you know, rightly divide the word of God because if you were to take that, like for instance, to this Facebook, you need to take it just that way and you were to say, you know what, I'm going to set myself from everybody. I'm not going to associate with nobody. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, not, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, then how in the world are you ever going to win the lost? How are you ever going to go and approach them and talk with them? And how are you ever going to win them over? Because if you think God is saying you need to totally separate yourself from the world like that, then you need to quit your job T tomorrow. You need to call the, your employer tomorrow and say, I ain't going. Tonight, say, I ain't going. You need to quit your job. And you need to stop going to the gym. Some of you felt that already. Yeah, you ain't going to the mall no more either. You ain't going to Six Flags. You ain't going to Disneyland. You ain't going to Remate. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. If you think that it's saying you need to separate yourself like that, then you ain't, you, you're not going to be around nobody. You ain't going to 7-Eleven. You ain't going to Winkle. You ain't going to Costco. You ain't going to Santa Club. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah. If you, if you think that's what he's saying, separate yourself. You'd have to, you'd have to quit everything. Look what John 17, uh, 17, 15 says. And Jesus was saying this himself. He said, "Might because it's just when he was talking to the disciples and, 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 and he was talking to God and said, you know what, you know, I'm going to be leaving, you know, and, and, and they're going to stay here. I've trained them. I taught them. I spent the years with them, and this is what I taught them. And, and they're gonna, I'm leaving them, you know, uh, like sheep amongst wolves, and, 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 and I'm leaving them here. And he says this, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, that you put, that you, but that you protect them from the evil one. Not that you take them out of it but that you protect them from the evil one. So when it talks about do not, I mean, I'm almost done. This is, this is a short message today. When it talks about do not be un, uh, uh, yoked together with unbelievers, that comes from uh, Deuteronomy 22.10, where it says do not plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Do, 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 not, do, not, do not do that. You can't put a donkey with an ox together, but when... When that passage, that scripture was given, that scripture was given um, vividly so you can see very clearly what we're supposed to understand and what, what we are to see when the, when the Lord is telling us, do not be yoked with an unbeliever and giving the example of, a, of an ox and a donkey because they were very familiar with the agriculture back in those days and they already knew, even the children knew, you can't do that. Because the donkey, donkey will kick and buck and stay there and the oxen don't know what to do. It's going to go, drag this thing. And they're going to go, they're not going to, it's not going to work out. So when he said that, he was telling everybody, do not be yoked with an unbeliever. That you can't mix those two. So that image was given to us very vividly. In other words, telling us, if you think that you're going to make an alliance with any form of darkness, whether it be the woman that doesn't love God or a business partner that doesn't love God, or you're going to be involved with certain things that don't honor God, that you, to an extent, he's saying you're making a grave mistake. So that's why that image was given us to us that way so we can see it and we say, now I understand something. I know what the Lord is telling me. Because when you get in with a, a, maybe a business partner and that business partner is a genius, a prodigy in a certain area of business and that, 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 that person's a heathen, doesn't honor God and you love the Lord, you're going to base it on the education or the, the skill they have to say, I need this for my business. 
and you're going to see things will just not work out in days to come. You, may, might, you might make a little bit of money, but it's going to destroy you. It's going to mess it. God will not be honored. You need to be very careful with that. I'd rather make less money, but God will be honored in everything that our business transactions that way. Because those that don't honor God in business, they'll say, well, what's wrong with just um, fudging the numbers a little bit in our taxes? Well, this is what I can do. And you really have to make a decision to snitch that person out or not. Yeah, or break that. You, you, and you're going to see little by little by little, the little flinches and the little fudging. Next thing you know, you're fudging big time, man. Because you're saying, how, how can I say anything now? I've been doing this for years. How can, how can, I, how can I make the change now? That's why don't, don't, don't get involved that way. Don't do that. You know, some of you, some of you brothers that, that ride in, with motorcycles, be very careful who you're riding with. Because I guarantee you, let me just give you an example. You can have, let's just say you got 15, 20, 20, 30 guys on a bike, and you guys are all going somewhere. And you get one guy that doesn't love Jesus, and that car got a, kind of got a little bit close to them, Tim, and he flips that car off coming this direction. That person that he flipped off is saying, all those bikers are tore up. They're not saying the one. They're not doing that. You need to be very, very careful who you choose to spend time with. Now, if you have a plan and you got a, uh, you got a, you got, a, you got a reason why you're doing what you're doing, that's good, but not for the sake of just hang out. If you're doing that, you're going to hang out with the heathens because you're going to win them to the Lord. You're going to, you're going to try to compel them to introduce them to Jesus. You got a, a plan of what you're doing, not just because you want to hang out with them because their bike looks like yours. You have to have a reason. Every, everything you do for the kingdom of God has to have a purpose. You can't do it based on feeling or emotion. You have to have a purpose in what God has called you to do in everything that you do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You know, I remember as a, as a young man, when, uh, when I first I went to school to do, uh, do body work, uh, auto body collision, and I was a journeyman working in a body shop. And, and in most every body shop that I worked in, every one of those dudes in there and the owners were nasty, cussing and drinking every day. And the owners would buy bottles for the guys, man. When they would make money, when we make money for them, they'd come up and give us Jack Daniels. And I'd just say, get this thing. They would give them to all the guys. And they would just, it was crazy. I was exposed to that stuff every single day for years. And I'm going to tell you this, in the name of Jesus, I didn't flinch. But the reason why? Because I chose not to flinch. I chose not to flinch. But I was exposed to it every single day. They'd bring women to the back rooms, and the guys were taking turns with those women. They'd say, your turn is in the name of Jesus. You need to get out of here, brother. Literally, they would, I'd say, you need to get out of here. I didn't flinch because I chose not to flinch. Are you with me? See, we, can, we have to live in this world. We have to live in this world. But we don't have to be like the world. We can stand out, like we talked about last week, as a light. We can stand out as a beautiful light, as a flame in the midst of darkness. Because as I said before, many people, when, they, when, they, when they're in trouble, they want to come to Christ. Very rarely do they call upon Jesus. They call upon somebody. They look for somebody that they know loves Jesus. And they'll search you out, and the Lord will place them before you that way. Look at 1 Corinthians, almost done, 9, 19 to 23. 1 Corinthians 9. 19. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. Verse 22. To the weak I became weak. To win the weak. I have become all things to all men. So that by what? All possible means. Let me stop there for a minute. By all possible means. Oh, I want to ask Tom about you one time. Here, listen, I'm done. By all possible means, find a way to persuade them, to convince them. It says again, by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. 
by all possible means. That's powerful. Hmm. In other words, we have to position ourselves because we're always waiting. We love God. We say, well, the Lord, Lord I'll pray. And if, if they come to me and ask me about you, I'll tell them. Or they shouldn't know about Jesus because I have a bumper sticker in the back. <laughs> That's not the definition of all possible means. We're always waiting for somebody, for the Lord to bring. We need to be, we need to be the initial. We need to go on and say, let me talk to you, Mom. Let me talk to you, brother. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. We need to be the ones to do that, amen? So the Lord is very, very clear that not just to be around folks, to be around them, but to position yourself to be able to convince them by all possible means that we may save some, amen? But let me tell you, I said earlier at the beginning, there, you know, there, there is so many that, that, have ha- that have gotten chance after chance after chance after chance and they still say, nope, 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 nope. And they curse God, and I just can't see that, how somebody can, they have to be totally, a lot of that's demonic. A lot of that is demonic. They're blinded by foul spirits, and, and, and the only thing that's going gonna, is gonna to get rid of that is the power of Jesus. Amen. And the power of Jesus comes through you and I. And if you and I don't say anything, then that individual is going to stay exactly the same that way. But then, like I said in the beginning, there are those that just, and they don't want to listen. And you cannot expose you and your, yourself to your, fam, your family that way to those individuals, to those people. Look what Numbers 16, 20, and 21 says. Because here we have a story when, when the Lord had told Moses to, to, to bring the people out of Egypt um, to the land of milk and honey, and they're wandering the desert. And they go, Moses goes up to God in the mountain and talks to God. And, and God, I mean, Moses is, I'm just paraphrasing, it takes a little bit too long. And by the time they come down, they're worshiping idols already. They make gold in uh, calves. They're worshiping, they're worshiping Baal, the devil. They're just, they're, they're idol worshiping. And when Moses confronted them, and then God told Moses and Aaron this, the Lord, verse 20, number 16, 20, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, separate yourself from this assembly so I can put an end to them at once. So if you really look at that context of that scripture, it's saying, God is saying, because we're thinking, oh, I, I can still stay amongst them, and God, God's going to deal with them, and he's going to destroy them, and, I, and I'm blessed of God, and I can still stay amongst them, and I'm okay because I'm a man of God, and I can still stay amongst them. But God said to physically separate from them, because you know what he's saying, I'm going to sock them up real good right now. He goes, I'm going to destroy them, and I need you to physically separate yourself from them. In other words, saying, if you don't physically separate yourself because of what I'm about to do, you're going to get what, I, what they got coming too because you, you, you stayed amongst the group. You, I'm a man of God. I told you to separate, and you chose to physically stay amongst the group, and I'm about to destroy them. That's why he said, I need you to physically separate. I need you to move to a different location because of what I'm about to do. And we choose to hang out with the same people over and over and over. And the Lord deals with them in a crazy way. And for some reason, you and your wife are, are, are paying for it. And your kids are going through something because you keep dealing with You keep uh, allowing yourself to stay around those, those influence that way. Look at Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 says. Come to me all, you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Look what he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you look at the scripture, and I read it back and forth and I read it before and afterwards and all that in the different uh, gospels. And if you look at when, when he's talking about, when he's saying this right here, it's in, the, it's in the inception, in the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So when he was talking to the disciples and to the crowd, he was telling them, if take my yoke, in other words, the one I'm wearing, he's saying, and fo- ministry just started, and follow me. 
He's saying to take the yoke with him and follow him and, and, and to go with him for his yoke is easy. But if you look, if you know what a yoke is, a yoke, when, when, when there's two in a yoke, there's not a front and a back. There's not one in the front, one in the back. They are side by side. What Jesus was saying in the beginning of his ministry, I want you to walk with me. In other words, taking this yoke with me, in other words, we are going to be walking together and everything we do, we're going to do this together. Amen. Wherever I place my hands, so will you. When I speak, you will be there. When I move, you will be there. The Lord is saying, take my yoke. Put it on. He's not saying, I'm going to take my yoke off and here, bam, go, go get somebody else. He says, I want you to walk side by side with me. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Let me tell you this last thing. In, in everything that you do for the Lord, everything that God is calling you to do, he's saying, I will, I will, be, I will be by your side. I will walk with you. He goes, I will be with you in everything that you do. So the Lord is saying, Live, live among them, but live separate. In other words, live among them, but yet live separate. In other words, keep my yoke on you, on you keep my yoke on you, and you're going to begin to see my hand move in a great and a powerful, powerful way. But many of us need to make a decision. We need to cut some people loose. Yeah. Because let me tell you, my prayers, God has shown me some things that, and I've said this before, but I don't see them anymore as, as a warning. I don't see it, these things God has given me as a warning anymore. I see it as it's happening right now. And if we can't hear and understand and obey based on what's happening right now, we're going to pay the full price of right now. Yeah. And the Lord has been very, I'll say like this, merciful he has been very patient in our lives for years because we have, we have done these things thinking, oh, God is okay with it. He, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, to be honest with you. God, not saying he was okay with it, but he was merciful. But he's at the point now in these last days, he says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. He says, because the time is now and the lives need to be changed now. Souls need to be saved now. There are people that are dying every day, but yet we're compromising our life over here and we choose not to move forward in what God has called us to do. Lord says, I'm no longer going to be patient that way. The time is now. And let me tell you, gentlemen, this message isn't for you yet. This is for me first. The Lord deals with me first. He just allows me to share it with you. Yeah. So this is not a warning. This is what's happening now. So be very careful. Make a decision. You, you, some of you might cost you some money because you're, you're going to cut business partners. Yeah, because you, it might have prospered because the devil said, I'll make it real comfortable. The Lord says, no more, no more. Mm -mm. I'm going to start pulling quilts. I'm going to stop drop, dropping silver dollars big time. Yeah, so be very careful, gentlemen. Amen? I'm done. Let's all stand. Amen. <clears throat>